Now we've talked about the federal government, and I listened to Diane Feinstein. Talked about the state. Let's keep it local yes. with our own Susan Danger, Danger, Danger <laughs> Richardson. Okay, you guys, how many of you would like to see me add one more danger to that? <laughs> you like that? All right. Well, what I want to show you is, is how we uh, ran our campaign and, and exactly what we wanted to do. Because what we decided amongst our core group is that whether we won or whether we lost, we wanted to have an effect. So if you lose, and nobody remembers who you are, what good were you? So we decided to come out really strong. So if you go to the next slide, I'll show you one of our pieces of literature. Um, next to our faces is what we believed in, so that is our positive piece. Then on the other side, we decided to, after door knocking and finding out what people's concerns were, we needed to make that part of the campaign. So this is something that you're fighting against. So you have something that you're fighting for, and then you have something that you're fighting against. So we were uh, unfunded. We said the district wanted to purchase iPads for all 18,000 students. The reason we chose that item was because we want to defeat Common Core in our school district. We do not want Common Core here. The next, thank you. The next thing we wanted, um, we know that we have students who are walking an extra half mile to school, so middle schoolers um, as young as age 11 are walking one and a half miles to school. High school students are walking two miles. That is completely unsafe in the winter. They're walking in the roads. We want people to know that. We want people, we want to also kind of cause a little bit of uncertainty, um, untrust in the school district. Then we um, wanted to make sure that we had the bullying bill on everybody's radar. So we decided to connect it with the East Ridge High School's implementation of the bullying app on the cell phones. And then we put the um, Minnesota Child Protection League on our card. Now I want you to know that we did lose, but we also, for one of the, I think it's probably the first time, actually defeated a referendum in South Washington County. Most of the referendums, they go through every single time. And it was important for us to at least, at least if we tanked one of the referendum questions, which we did, $8 million, so we saved you guys $8 million. Now I want to show you some of the things that were being said about us. This is uh, SD53 uh, GOP. I mean, um, DFL. <laughs> um, not really a whoops, but okay. Um, we, we, um, <laughs> we, we, what we noticed was is Lori Johnson was my, um, my opponent. She happened to win. It says she has the support of the local Republican Party. Her redeeming quality is that she supports the 833 referendum and she hasn't done any major harm to the school district. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Susan Richardson, research reveals Susan Richardson is so extreme. She's to the right of the Tea Party. She doesn't support the 833 referendum. It's been reported she believes our schools have a socialist agenda. Imagine that, you guys. Um, members of the East Metro Tea Party are working overtime to get Richardson elected to our school board, and there's the danger, danger, danger <laughs> part. So that, that is where my middle name now comes from. So to keep extreme candidates, which would be me and Leilani, off the school board, <laughs> Um, Lori Johnson was their only option, 
And they went with option uh, Lori Johnson, but you know what, that's okay, because one of the referendums didn't go through. Um, your next, the next slide was what the uh, uh, SD53 DFL was saying once again about us. Leilani Homestead, Tea Party candidate, running with um, fellow Tea Party candidate Susan Richardson, actively opposing the referendum, did not participate in the League of Women Voters Candidate Forum. Isn't that good? Yeah. And then, of course, uh, myself, two-year candidate, far right. I'm far right. East Metro Tea Party candidate, actively opposing the referendum, did not participate in the League of Women Voters. Um, then it goes through all of the other candidates um, that were running in the race. The next page, the next slide, is a letter from, I believe it was the Curriculum Committee, from the curriculum committee went out, I would assume via school district email, which would be illegal, but it says, dear friends, please excuse the group email. I hope I am only reaching out to those of you who live in District 833 and maybe not the enemy either, which would be us, but um, because the boundaries are a little weird, if I got it wrong, please feel free to hit the delete now. Tuesday is an election in District 833 for school board candidates and the three school district referendum questions. This is a very important election even though there are no legislative elections on the ballot. And for me, this election has become very personal because I am being very individually attacked for things I have not done. So I know, I'm ready to cry myself here, but uh, so I am reaching out to ask you to please, 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 where have I seen capital letters before? They're not in red, though, like my danger, danger, danger. So um, take the time to vote on Tuesday so that the people associated with the attacks on me will not get elected to the school board. The woman supporting them has also filed, thank you, Andrea, supported, or she's also filed a formal complaint against our small volunteer committee in support of the referendum, which I'm co-chairing. And uh, we will spend tomorrow talking with the judge rather than urging people to be informed voters. You can see what you can do with just a few people. We have, we have them going in front of a judge, you guys. I mean, really, this is, this is just amazing. So the people I would ask you not to vote for are Susan Richardson, Leilani Homestead, and Molly Lutz. Now, didn't my name get out there a lot, you guys? I mean, really, they even linked to um, the a piece of literature I just showed you. I mean, how great is that? I got free advertising and everything from them. But um, I wanted you to know about some of the known attacks that occurred. Um, the Lighthouse Baptist Church was threatened with a potential loss of nonprofit status for posting our campaign signs on their church property. Um, there was a, we know there was a black truck invo involved, there was a little bit of stocking that was going on also. Um, the tavern restaurant was threatened with negative press and loss of business if Susan and Leilani's signs were not removed from the property. Stocking at the church in Cottage Grove and the candidates we had numerous stolen and mutilated signs. Some of the people who had our signs in their yard got threatening and intimidating phone calls. Um, we had attacks on the East Metro Tea Party Facebook page by anonymous trolls and candidates. We were physically intimidated while door knocking. I had a drink thrown at me on Saturday and I wasn't even thirsty. So that was kind of weird, but um, now, now I want to tell you all of the people who came out to support us, which were very many. So I'm going to turn this over to um, Leilani so that she can uh, read some of the names to you. I just want to say, who would think that a stay-at-home mom and a homeschool mom could cause such a ruckus in this business? <laughs> we have lots of people to thank, and so we tried to remember all of them, and I hope that we did. But Nick Karen, South Suburban Rental in Newport, Tennis Sanitation, based in St. Paul Park, Sherry Green, Mache, which is the Minnesota Association of Christian Home Educators, Bose Heating and Air and Appliance Repair out of Cottage Grove, Hope Christian Academy, Bob McManus with Hill City Productions, the East Metro Tea Party, Yazdan Bosch, 
Gary Huckery, Lois Milner and the Conservative Grassroots, excuse me, Grassroots Group in North Oaks, Eagle Forum, Phyllis Shackley, Janet Byhoffer, Bev and Mike Moreland, Betty Marquette, Harry and Bev Blado, and Sally Cole, Pastor Lauren Bukney, Jim Dorden, Postnet, Bob Tejo, Ho King Restaurant in Cottage Grove, Rocco's Pizza in Cottage Grove, Gary Richardson, Gail Homestead, Kelly Fenton, Jack, Jake Dusenberg, and Jack Rogers, Kirk Babak, Burback, sorry, <laughs> Janice Quinlan, Michelle Lenz, Steve Ellenwood, Sue Etzweiler, The 56 Club, Michelle Ventura, Marissa Novak, Leon Moe, um, he also has the CottageGroveCitizenVoices.com, Dirk Osteen, Brian Olson, Andy Selig, Sassy Dye Salon, AutoZone in Cottage Grove, and O'Reilly Auto Parts in Cottage Grove, Minnesota League Protection, Minnesota Child Protection League, excuse me, Julie Quist, Renee Doyle, Bonnie Nugent, The Tavern Restaurant, Lighthouse Baptist Church, Tim Carey, Linda Stanton, and the Washington County Republicans, Minnesota Hockey Mama, Allison Harder, the American Heritage Girls. Um, that troop is located in Brooklyn Park, and we had people come from Osseo, Elk River, Anoka, and that around me to do lit drops for us. Linda Lurkey and A Touch of Home, Eric Langness and Washington County Watchdog. And finally, a big thank you to the SD53 DFL for my new nickname, Susan Danger 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 Richardson, the South Washington County School District 833, and East Ridge High School Principal Aaron Harper for lighting the fire in all of us. Thank you so much, you guys.